it took an entire year's worth of just throwing up before every round because I was so terrified. But I got over, I I got over my fear of it, and then it just became something that I would rather go to a tournament every weekend than have a social life. Each time you get a new partner, you have to adapt to the types of arguments you both like to explain and that you're both comfortable with and the way the other person thinks. But once you do, it's really good to have someone that can you know, support you in the debate round and it's good to be in the room and know that at least one person is on your side and agreeing with you. Can you state the topic? Resolved, it is morally permissible for victims to, u to use deadly force as a deliberate response to repeated domestic violence. Or something close to that, I still don't know what it is. I felt very prepared for this topic. This is probably the topic I've prepared most for, because I've had 31 rounds now on the topic, which is more than most judges have judged in a year. And so I felt really comfortable with knowing everything. When I was pulling up evidence, I knew where the evidence was, and that's a very new experience for me. I'm very used to having to shuffle through a mound of papers, and this was a lot easier. I don't really know what side I fall on on this topic. I think I fall on the negative side more, but for none of the reasons I'm advocating. I'm not saying that like every single person is going to have the same moral like, view. I'm saying that uh, every sing under every single moral system of every individual, self-defense will be prevented. The only way to truly end domestic violence is to end the self-defining cycle of victimization. To do this, we must shatter the concept of the woman as a victim and recognize her intent as a survivor. You see the way that what you're talking about in the round works in real life, and I think especially with Lincoln Douglas because because what we're talking about are the philosophical issues behind the cases instead of the cases themselves. The burden of the negative is to prove the resolution not true. What debate is this is like in Douglas debate, we're debating about morality here. Well, I'm being reciprocal because I'm giving the victim right to attack back. Um, you're going to extend Ewing, which also talks about how the war being proportional because abuse is actually worse than death. Meaning that, like, what are you um, thinking or doing while your opponents are speaking? Occasionally, blah, 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 blah. I'm winning this. But most of the time, I'm thinking, where did he get that argument? Or why did he say that? And sometimes there's frantic moments of panic. And sometimes there's moments of, oh, I hit that two rounds ago. I know what's going on. But most of the time, it's frantic panic. She listens to I'm generalizing. She's also generalizing everything. You're not going to vote for me. Off the off there. There were, I gave him an extra seven seconds, because there were oh. seven seconds there yeah. where we were like, not sure what was going on. So, no problem. Mm -hmm. So what's it like debating with a partner? I personally really like having a partner, because when I screw up, she can cover my screw ups, and, and vice versa. And I also like the idea of, we don't think the same way, and so I am an incredibly logical thinker, and so if something is stated abstractly, she thinks about it a little differently, and so we come at the problem from different angles, and that generally leads to a better solution, versus LD, where you just have one partner, and it's more sort of, kind of, it's all on you, and that's not a bad thing necessarily, but it's nice to have like something to like balance out your ideas to make sure you cover the spectrum of what your responses should be. Um, how do you feel after you win a debate and after you lose a debate? Um, so obviously it's great to win a debate, you feel pretty happy. Um, sometimes you feel like maybe the judge made a weird decision, like you won but you think you should have won on something else. And so that can be a bit odd because you're happy you won but you're also kind of like, what's going on? Um, and when you lose a debate, it can be kind of, you know, a downer. Um, sometimes it's very frustrating because you think, oh, there's just one thing I could have done to win that debate and turn it around completely. Winning a debate is pretty exciting, but I don't think I really learn anything when I do that because as soon as I hear, like, I voted after I voted egg and that's the side we're on, I kind of stop listening to why the judge voted, which probably isn't the best. But when we lose a round, I listen very carefully to what the judge had to say.
he conceded my entire case and then conceded that he linked into it, which was really exciting. And it shouldn't be exciting because I think that that means that I'm psychopathic or sociopathic to watch the other people suffer so much, but so much fun. Losing makes it me inspired to work harder and winning is the exact opposite.